Hello, and welcome to day three of Mermaid with Katya. Hey, yeah, He's here welcome. with us again. Yep, so we've been working on a project uh, the past couple of days, but if you're just tuning in, that's fine. Um, but well, for been... those who have not been here with us. Sure, so what, I... Uh, <laughs> what is your past? Who are you? Oh, yeah, all right. Why um, are we even here? I've got answers to some of those questions. Not all of them. Uh, I'm Katya. I have a background in design and illustration, and today I've been working on some uh, illustration on the iPad Pro with Apple Pencil, and the kind of twist that I put on it is I draw a bunch of frames and then I animate them in Photoshop. So you'll see a little bit of all of that today. Um, I've made a couple different animated elements over the past couple of days, and today we're going to put them together and hope that they don't clash. <laughs> so far, you've proven your artistic skill to me by drawing by drawing reverse in front of merms. Me. I know it's not all a lie. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. reverse merms is really where it all came together, which mm -hmm. is the delightful name for fish leg creature thing. Reverse merm, anti merm, to <laughs> toe fish is another popular Bizarro one. Bizarro merm. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess today's the last day of mermay, so. Oh yeah. Better wrap it up, yeah. grand, grand finale. It's very sad and exciting. <laughs> It'll come again next because year. Because we gotta figure out what next month is. Yeah. For what our drawing sessions are gonna be going forward. So think on that, friends. Yeah, if, if anyone has any sort of June-based potential options for drawing to keep the drawing going, decide to throw them into that chat. But, so today, if you're involved in the Behance chat and you've logged in and getting all the good questions across, you'll have the opportunity about 30 minutes from now to be up for winning one of these very soft, delightful Photoshop pillows. Wow, yeah. Yeah, right? I wanna put my face on that, but I won't it's because soft. it's for you. Yes, it is not for her yet. Maybe in the future. Oh, However, hang on, hold it up in oh, front no, of you. Oh boy. Over here, over here. <laughs> there it is. Look at that uh, fuzzy high def detail. Could be like, slow product spin. <laughs> and today, if you order now. For the low. Oh look at that flamingo. I didn't realize we have that behind us right now. All three days, dude? I zone out a lot. <laughs> Wait, if we kind of shift, I think we can both be wearing party hats. Oh yeah. Wait. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. We broke the system. Yeah, well, uh, oh. all right. Well, all right, I hope you got a screenshot, mom. So also on top of that, uh, we have portfolio review for everyone today. So if you would like to have your work for Katya to review and give feedback on, on the artwork itself, how you present yourself, anything around that, yep, it you can, can go into the portfolio review tab in Behance and submit in the little Google forms that's available. Please do. Yeah, I'd love to take a look at what everybody in the chat has been up to. Sadly, we are not getting mermaid drawings today. But they have been so good. So I want to see what else you guys do. Yeah, exactly. So, hello everyone. Where are you all coming from this lovely day? Ooh, some people Somebody are already fans of the pillow. The moon? Oh no, they're rhyming with June. That would be uh, fun. Yeah, that would be a very... <laughs> you just do the entire cycle of the moon over the course of the month? That would be... Very simple. But fun. See it spin it, yeah. All right, so what do you have for us today that you're working on? All right, yeah, so uh, we worked on a little toe wiggle for a reverse merm, um, so on my laptop. I, last night, um, I just didn't think that one foot was enough, so um, now both of the toes You've are wiggling. You've already taken so much from him. <laughs> so just a really simple, cute little toe wiggle. Um, and uh, just to remind everybody how the whole export process works. So I'm gonna get rid of these backgrounds so that it's, he's just kinda hovering over, um, uh, trans Void pixel tra land. transparent. And uh, you can do a couple things. You can do a save as a GIF file if you wanna send it straight to the internet. <laughs> Don't even bother trying to say GIF or GIF, GIF anymore. GIF, GIF, GIF. <laughs> <laughs> Start that up again. Um, so I'm gonna go to export and render video. And reverse merm.mov is a good name. Reverse merm is a great name. <laughs> reverse merm. Uh, so to keep that transparent background, which is what we want right now, we're gonna go with a quick time. And uh, I don't really touch the other presets except for straight unmatted, because the <laughs> alpha channel is what you're gonna want to have transparency. 
And if you're gonna put your reverse merm over a background, like I am, then that's what you want. Leo also asked, is that applied to all keyframes or just that one? Oh, hey, thanks, good catch, yeah. Um, if you're in the first keyframe, then the changes will apply to all the other ones. I didn't catch that I was in the sixth one. So thank you. Um, now we can render it out. Um, it's almost like changing the future. <laughs> yes. Going back in time. So render the video now that everything's transparent. Um, replace that. I think I saved it to my desktop. Yep, reverse merm. There he is. <laughs> so. Floating in the ocean of the wallpaper. <laughs> of my cat wallpaper. Oh, another thing I did last night, just as a added detail, um, I animated a really quick little teacup floating. So this is gonna be reverse merm's teacup. So tea's floating everywhere, tea bag's floating everywhere. Uh, and the scale line on it looks real nice with the whole rotation feel. Yeah, just a little sense of depth. Real quick. Ha. Ha ha ha, because it's underwater. Ocean. So I already saved this out as a .mov, so we don't need to save that. Um, so now on my desktop, because on the first day, we got normal merm, and now we've got reverse merm, mm. and we've got some floating T. So I, do you guys want to put it together? Or maybe do a background first, so we can put it together. Yeah, who wants to see the animation or the background? Because we're going to do Done both. First. Yeah. It's um, basically like choosing your dessert before your dinner. <laughs> Which one's the dessert? I don't know. It's a whole other question. <laughs> um, what do you want to do? I think maybe the background will help us place the other, the other files. So I'm going to come back to my iPad over here. And let's hash out a real quick little background. Um, so here's my original sketch that I sort of drew off of. So let's throw some bright colors on here because that's my favorite thing. I forget, was there ever a sketch of the table or was that never? No, I never did the okay. table. So we can put that in there too. Um, and people have been giving me some really good uh, underwater pun foods like uh, limpets and tea instead of crumpets and tea. That's, that's pretty a good. pretty good one. Um, crab cakes. Uh, crab cakes are a real thing, right? Yeah. Okay, but we can make it like a yeah, crab I feel like cake. The weirdness of fish eating crab. They're. I mean, they crustaceans. Do. Yeah. They're, They're different. Different. <laughs> um, let's do some nice. Or we do like shallows or some goofy cereal. Shallows. Because everyone has cereal with their tea. We put jellyfish on toast. Oh, jellyfish marshmallows. Ooh. Mm. It's going to have to be a pretty big table. So hungry for weird oceanic <laughs> cereal <laughs> Didn't now. you just have lunch, dude? Yes. It was another broth-based kind of food. All right. Let's just give some. Because reverse worms got to have something to sit on. Other merm doesn't. Are they underwater? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're floating around, at least the mermaid is. Um, Trying to drink their tea while it floats away. <laughs> I'm just putting in some ocean rocks, maybe. I think those are maybe too purple. As a Marylander, I cannot acknowledge the question of the existence of crab cakes, says Dana. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, Dana. You upset her. <laughs> I, uh, please still be my friend and watch. <laughs> I mean, coming from Rhode Island, I know all the weird New Englandy seafood things. <laughs> uh, there's also... Give me some ideas then. Mm, well, there's a bunch of different chowder types. Chowder? Rhode Island chowder, Portuguese, New England, Manhattan. <laughs> Are they easily distinguishable mm, in a quick sketch? <laughs> sorta. One's creamy, one's red because it's like tomato based. Oh, all right. The other one's a transparent broth. Ooh, okay. That sounds gross. Uh. Kevin says, if they're underwater, can you make the water more wet? More wet? Yeah. What would that Is entail? this the same guy who asked the fish to be tasty? I mean, yeah, I'm <laughs> definitely going to do both of those things, Kevin. Come at me with make all your weird requests. Make the fish tasty and the water wet. <laughs> Critique done. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here to oblige. I mean, I threw the toe wiggle in for one of y'all. Um, it's true. And that was an excellent idea. Uh, Let's see, maybe some sand. It needs some sand. 
So they're near the bottom of this ocean. Yeah, well, Reverse Merm's gotta sit his butt down on something. It's true. <laughs> New England is a weird place. I agree, Leo. Oh, one of my best friends ever is from there. We were roommates in college all four years. Um, Perfect. I learned a lot from her. <laughs> Just about New England? Yeah, in life, you know. I mean. Being a person. It is the area that founded the country in a kind of violent way. Yeah, I mean, she didn't, but she's no. got that spirit. <laughs> I lived in Salem for a while, so I was very much around all the Salem witch trials. Ooh. While well, they actively happened around me. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Did you get some popcorn and Leo, go watch? Leo, grew up in Boston. Nice. <laughs> the whole goofy spelling of things like Worcester. <laughs> Kevin asks, how would you add texture to your drawing slash elements? How do I add texture? Um, sometimes I'll just drop this flow down. Um, you guys can see, right? This <laughs> flow, uh, this is the middle one right over here. Boost the size up as big as it'll go and just brush on um, texture. There's some other Kyle brushes, Kyle gouache brushes that are kind of more geared towards that. Let me change the color to be a little bit darker so you can see. Have you ever used the spatter brush? Spatter brush, uh, yeah, probably. It's pretty good for sand. It creates like a bunch of it's really like small this guy, dots. Right? You yeah. In. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of like that. So I'm just What's that put, one called? This one is... How many terms can you come up for the similar spattering The Blair technique? Bristle Dry. Say that. Oh, but it's gouache? Yeah, see that? Ten oh, times it's fast. a brayer. Gosh. You being like. No, blair. Really? Is that a typo, Kyle? No, I don't think so. What the hell, Kyle? <laughs> no, yeah, Super that's dry. definitely intentional. Um. Also, hello, Voodoo Val. Hey. Always here with us, always supportive. But she also says no one can say that you don't listen to what people want. So you're a great artist for clients. Yeah, hey, yeah. I try to be. That's the goal. Granted, <laughs> push back when they're crazy. Because I can't be myself. Them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've definitely had to, you know, tell some clients, what you are asking for might not be in good taste. What you really want is fish money. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, the real secret to dealing with clients is sometimes you just have to make them what they want, but then also make something else that's mm -hmm. better so that they can see the difference. That works wonders, usually, usually. Yeah, there's a lot of benefit to showcasing what they want in a way that's going to prove to them that it's a terrible idea. Yeah, maybe like don't put as much effort into it or put a lot of effort into making it look really bad. Just exaggerating what they asked for. Yep, um, it does wonders and saves a lot of time. Yeah, well. Wasting conversation. <laughs> Kevin asks, do you use reference photos sometimes to draw scenes? Yeah, sometimes. Um, if it's someplace I haven't been, but I happen to live in an octopus's garden, so <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I definitely do. I, I don't tend to draw a lot of backgrounds. I really enjoy sort of characters, strange characters floating in the void. <laughs> like the, the reference that was yesterday's is just a guy sitting on a tooth, <laughs> bouncing up and down in a pink ocean, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I think drawing from references is super beneficial. Um, and I think there's like a lot of benefit to drawing from reference outside of the context of the final piece, and then you can bring what you learn from it mm -hmm. to that piece. Yeah, I definitely Googled pictures of fish <laughs> <laughs> um, on the plane ride over, you know, just make sure, because I, I don't really like to look at fish that often. They don't make me feel nice things <laughs> about It's like, this makes me alive. angry. <laughs> Did someone sitting next to you just watch as you flip through all these fish yeah, pictures? Yeah, she didn't talk to me. I don't know why. <laughs> This girl's weirdly into fish. Um, let's put some uh, texture on this guy. Kevin also asks, how do you present your idea to a client before you start doing the work? Ooh, yeah, that's another tricky one because especially so many artists are visual thinkers. Um, so when you show a sketch, like even a rough sketch to somebody who doesn't have the context of what's in your brain and can't interpret it the same way a visual thinker might be able to, they're gonna look at your sketch and think, not, not be able to imagine the final product that you have in your head. So I'm really careful about showing rough sketches to people. I mean, sometimes the opposite happens where the person's like, oh, this sketch is perfect. Mm -hmm. Let me put it up. And it's a 72 DPI bad sketch. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it usually depends on what I know about the client. Mm -hmm. um, 
their workflow. So sometimes I'll say, I'll, I'll show them like a mood board that has, uh, it's a little bit easier for them to connect the dots because it's, you know, a photograph and a color palette. Um, for, de for design stuff, I'll usually ask them for if they have anything in mind already um, and sort of go from that context. Uh, I know what's helped me a lot is asking if they had any other companies or illustrations they particularly liked mm -hmm. and how that would apply to the thing they're asking for and then send me a link to like a mood board or something. Yeah, so exactly. at least I know where to start from and what colors they're into, what kind of shapes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it definitely depends on the client when it comes to how much they're going to be able to parse out of your sketch, knowing it's a sketch if they're an artistic minded client, but yeah, cause even otherwise addendums, being like, what the hell is this? Even addendums sometimes aren't enough. Yeah. Um, and you want to present yourself as professional, but you also have deadlines to meet. <laughs> so just always be kind. Always be that kind. part of the professionalism, very crucial. Yep. Uh, but like it, yeah, and it depends on what you're doing as well. So if you're doing um, like wireframes, or if you're doing it like design, uh, wireframes are often a good medium place. If you're doing um, illustration, it might be good to, even if it's not part of your natural flow, maybe good to have a black and white, just line drawing sketch. Mm -hmm. um, not yeah. charades. Not charades. Okay. But if you could translate an idea in charade form, <laughs> that would be an awesome client. Maybe you've just got a client that is into that. <laughs> or if they're like, ah, more like this, and then they do charades. <laughs> that's, that's happened to me, I think. <laughs> Ugh. In, in, in so many words. And always ask for like actionable feedback. Mm -hmm. um, Much like having any meeting coming out with a very specific, conclusive thing to take away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how... How do you sort of arrange meetings with clients? Is it a as you need to, or do they ask for a lot more meetings than you're willing to deal with and you try to like have to <laughs> give that distance between you and the client? Yeah, so when you're working with clients, um, it's really good to set boundaries early on. And a lot of people, um, I have been surprised, they just have never worked with a designer or an artist before, so they don't know what the flow is like. So when they reach out to me, even if they don't ask, I'll say, so my typical workflow goes like this. We'll have a meeting to talk about your ideas. I'll send you one to four different sketches. We'll pick from that um, to make sure we're going the right direction, and then we'll refine and revise as needed. Um, and yeah, I've had clients who really just like to send one feedback thing at a time. So do yourself a favor and try to get them to batch their comments mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're not sending over two ch small, small changes every <laughs> Two hours. So you're just in this like nightmare of an email chain where it's like, I know it was in here somewhere. Yeah. I have to go back a ton and try to find slash decipher. Mm hmm. So do yourself a favor and and even mm -hmm. even if you want it, you're a big people pleaser, um, and have that instinct, set set boundaries because that'll make the client respect you more. And if they really don't like it, then it might not be a healthy client to work with. Mm hmm. Leo says, define scopes are a must. Yep. I think mm -hmm. we can all agree on that. For photography, for design, for anything. Yep. So I'm just adding some barnacles over here. Ooh. Will match very well with the mermaid's hair. Uh huh. When she comes back into this picture. Yep. What do they do when they're not in the art? When they're not what? In the art. They're just uh -huh. wandering off somewhere else. They float in the void and bring about positive change in other realms. <laughs> Maybe a sea star. It's so sad how those have started to die out. Have you seen yeah. that? Like Monterey used to have a ton of them. I mean, the ocean in general is in a hard place, which I think is also a good reason that the mermaid thing Between a rock on. and a hard place? The rock being <laughs> the rock we live on and us being the hard place? <laughs> or is the hard place like the meteor that's imminently coming? Ooh. I mean, you had that cute party hat yeah, Asteroid, right? That's true. I haven't put that on the Just here to yet. party. That's just on my Instagram. If you guys are wondering about <laughs> that rock. Um, Kevin asks again. More questions? More questions? Very good about questions. Nice. I love it. Uh, how do you plan your projects? To do list, any system, advice, tips? Ooh, I live my entire life on Google Docs. 
and I've got lists and lists and spreadsheets for everything. All my friends make fun of me for it. Um, but secretly, I think they're just jealous and they really respect me, but it comes out as making fun of me. Um, <laughs> That's how I know it's true care. Yeah, uh-huh. But yeah, I have uh, just a mega spreadsheet for all of my personal career development, and I have goals for um, how many projects I want to get done each month. And I don't like hold myself to them religiously. Um, it's more of just having a, a kind of realistic goal uh, for myself. So I, I, I definitely do a lot of personal projects, um, keep my contacts pretty organized, try to be good about my inbox. Um, and yeah, I just have a Google Doc uh, spreadsheet for all of my clients. I've got different folders that has all of their stuff in it because it's really easy to just share a specific folder with a client. Because uh, I, I do a lot of remote work. Um, so. You're doing remote work right now? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, does that answer the question? I think so, yeah. It's almost like you're creating a scope of work for yourself. Yeah. Um, I know some companies use like the Scrum system, which is a very hip Silicon Valley thing. And I've kind of adopted some parts of that. Does anyone in illustration use Scrum on a day-to-day? -day? I've taken elements of it, yeah, but like just strictly being the like. The spirit of it. Yeah. I mean, I have post-it notes that I just kind of move down the line. Yeah. It's kind of like. Uh, it does feel good to put them away. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, tear off board. Sometimes I write down, I get my day started by writing down things I've already done. It makes me feel good. Like, God <laughs> did it. Um, Throw it towards the recycling, but then the wind catches the one post-it and throws it elsewhere. <laughs> Never feels good. Um, Sarah, who's just here, is now trolling us with a question that's actually very good. <laughs> like, how do you manage the amount of feedback a client gives you? Uh, yeah, if they give me... Well, I mean, I've never had a client who gives me way too much. That's, But I have had a lot of clients who just give me very ambiguous feedback. They're, I, I don't like this thing. And they don't say why. And they don't give me any direction to go. And they just are looking at, at the thing and they say, nah. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So in those cases, I try to repeat back what I think I heard them say in my own words so that you know they get a confirmation that what they're saying is entering my brain in the way that they intended. <laughs> um, and then it's all about asking leading questions. Or if you're getting a client who just loves to talk, when you send a draft, send three main questions and say, um, like set the parameters for how you want to get the feedback just right off the bat. Mm -hmm. It's always about communicating and letting people know what the expectations are. Yep. Works wonders. Communication is the biggest thing, like the biggest strength for, I found anything. It, for anything, for being in an office, especially for working. freelancing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great. We'd have so many fewer movies if people or characters could just communicate. Because, <laughs> I mean, it makes for good dramatic plots. However, if people weren't good at communicating, we'd have far less movies because they never got a project done. I had an idea. Yeah. Well, another thing. <laughs> also, if you're just joining us today, if you're involved in the Behance channel, asking all the good questions, getting involved in what you're up to, and just being involved in the community, you'll have a chance to win this Photoshop pillow, which we'll be giving away pretty shortly. It's very soft. It's great to rest your head on after a long day's work, or if you just want to take a quick nap, which I know is definitely a thing I need. <laughs> Do you take a lot of breaks? Like No, I like no? to get in the zone, and then I forget to eat. But and your eyes just become bloodshot staring at a screen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I my break is sort of getting up. I work from home, so my break is getting up and making myself uh, some more caffeinated beverages, usually tea or coffee, or playing with my cat. Thus. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Only reason I'm not sleeping right now. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You're welcome. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd be curious. Voodoo sort of threw out the uh, lots of people working while they watch. How many of you are working while you're watching right now? I know before I came here, I was actually watching the streams previously on one monitor while I was drawing on the other. Yeah, it's I a had, great background. I, I talked to a bunch of people over the course of this week who uh, um, were either just watching with no audio or were just listening. Mm 
-hmm. So I'm sure there's things that we could do to freak out both of those people. Like, <laughs> turn on the audio. Because like, you don't really know what I'm talking about right now. And you any don't stand up? <laughs> when they're like, oh yeah, I was on the train, and then, and you just hear like, noises, and then they're like, oh, this isn't going to look good on like, podcast radio or something. Oh. <laughs> like any comedian that does a lot of energetic stand up. Uh -huh. Just does not translate well. Yeah. yeah, I've been told I, ta I talk with my hands a lot, which I guess I haven't really been doing since I'm drawing with my hands. But, but they're all baseball gestures, too. <laughs> so it doesn't even make sense. Playing landing signals. <laughs> I learned all these hand gestures, and now I'm trying to apply it to design. <laughs> hmm. What are your top three advice that you would give to creatives today? Top, your top three advice. Top three? Young creatives. Ooh, OK. Um, the biggest thing that I found is that it's okay to enter a period of exploration in which your style is not consistent. For the longest time, I was really upset with myself because all the stuff I was drawing was completely different and putting it all next to each other, it, it looked That's so so, so confusing. And um, I know that it's very important to give a sense of consistency, especially if you have an Instagram feed. You want people to know what to expect from you. Um, Mm -hmm. so that they trust you and come back for more of the same. But in order to get there, it, it is really hard. Um, there's an opportunity cost. If you're drawing one style, it means there's 10 other styles you're not drawing. So it took me a long time to sort of arrive on this uh, kind of flattened, cartoony, party-themed stuff. Um, but like I was doing really old-fashioned pen and ink sketches for a long time, or just really clean-cut design. Um, is it something that you just felt most enjoyable drawing this stuff? Yeah, or? and um, I had to, I had to experiment to know what I really enjoy doing, like how what kind of project really got me in the zone. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that's kind of two. So so one is definitely experiment and take time when you're young to try everything, and so that when you do make a decision on what you want to pursue. Um, it's, you feel good about it. You don't feel like you're losing out in other areas. And the, the other one is, as you become more mature, do try to hone your sense of style and apply it to your work and try to deliver things that are consistent. And especially in your portfolio, which I guess we'll talk about more later. Mm -hmm. um, if you're trying to get, get clients, clients need to see that you've already done the type of work that they want to hire you for. So if you're... Um, like if you want to get hired for infographics, which are great, um, you need to show a couple of those. You can't just convince somebody with your words that you can also do infographics well if you only have posters in your portfolio. Because they might be related, but clients are kind of shopping in a different mindset. I mean, it kind of goes back to the sketching or how you're going to communicate with the client too, is just like, it's a literal seeing is believing yeah. on a lot of ways. Because they're not all visual learners. Exactly. Um, let's draw a table. Was that two and a half pieces of advice? Those are the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> if another one occurs to you at any point, yeah. just yell it out. Oh, work-life balance. Um, start that early. Yeah. It, you, you do have the stamina to do all-nighters in college. M my friends and I did it, and uh, it wasn't healthy. Yeah, it definitely catches up with you. Yeah, and art is so subjective, you're never actually done. You can't ever solve the equation and have the right answer. So be good to yourself. Um, stay you healthy. Find, <laughs> do you find when you have gone through those phases of not taking care of yourself when it comes to like eating, sleeping properly, exercising, your work suffers? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, creativity comes from all sorts of places, but if this is gonna be your career long term, make sure it comes from a place of health, <laughs> you know? Because I mean, I've definitely had super late nights and I just get the best idea around 5 a.m. But that's not practical if I'm gonna be doing, like I can't do that every time, I need a good idea. Um, do you carry around like a notebook or anything that kind of keeps tabs of those things when they do occur? Oh yeah, um, I write down a lot like right before I go to bed or right when I wake up mm -hmm. um, so that I don't, run to my computer every time I have an idea, I can just you know save it for later. Um, kind of put it away in a bank so your mind's not constantly working. Yeah. Um, and Super it's good, good advice. It's good to have a sort of, even if you, you're not gonna use the idea right away, 
make yourself a personal inspiration log because when I'm dry on ideas and I have time, um, sometimes I'll go back to my old ideas and pick one up and dust it off and make something. Absolutely. Actually, most of my drawings have happened that way. Like I'll just be walking down the street, jot something really incoherent down in my sketchbook and then actually turn it into something real months later. Like, or you find out which ideas didn't hold up. Yeah. Because you look at the notes and are like, huh, maybe this one was just funny at the time or something, but yeah. I don't understand what I was trying to tell myself. Yeah, I've definitely done sketches where I went back to um, redo them and they didn't age well in my brain, so I didn't draw them. And that was the right choice. Constantinos asks, did you always feel confident of drawing? Uh, no. Um, I mean, I always really loved it, but I didn't like people watching me and because uh, you might have like a, for a lot of artists, they've got a really good eye and a really good sense of style, but they can't necessarily execute on that well. Um, so like your taste level might be higher than your skill level. And as you get older, hopefully your skill level will start to match your taste level and you can actually start producing work um, that, <laughs> sorry, that was so mean. Um, you can actually start producing work that you feel good about, but there's a lot of work to get there. So I think it's very natural for artists to feel un unconfident, disconfident, unconfident yeah. um, about their stuff for a long time. Yeah, there's definitely, I think this, showcases and helps too, is just like being confident in your work that there isn't that worry that when people do watch, there's any judgment or like something's wrong or you're doing something wrong or. I mean, I still don't like people to look over my shoulder. On the plane ride here, I was worried people were gonna Fish see. Fish lady watching? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, oh, that's way too dark. Um, I was sort of interjecting this pillow because pillow don't forget. is yeah. happening. So. Start getting more involved. We're right about there. This awesome is the thing nice. to win. Yeah. How is it? And so the winner of this pillow is Constantino Arg. Argy. G. Ar G. Ar it's spelling. He just asked us a question and we gave a good answer. And it's Way spelling in front of us. We forgot how to talk, but congratulations, Constantino. Awesome. You're going to get a pillow. You're going to get a great night's sleep as you yeah. rest your creative Hopefully mind. you have other pillows and this isn't the only one. <laughs> so it can add to the collection of delightful pillows that already exist. You don't want a lone pillow like you don't want a lone cat. Just be alone and sad. I only have one cat. Well, now it's alone and sad. No, I have friends <laughs> who are watching him. Um, say hi to Marty for me. Uh, he's a cat. He's he's kind of a brat. Does he's he a, think he's a person? Um, he thinks he's better than me, so I don't know if he thinks he's a person or a cat, but he definitely he's thinks he's better than me. <laughs> um, he's exceeded whatever I have. <laughs> he also, if you're Joining today, we are not doing a drawing along with us mermaid experience. However, if you want to draw a mermaid in. Feel free. Yeah, absolutely draw it's a mermaid. It's the last day of mermaid, so maybe well you have it. to draw 29 mermaids. Because Make up for all those days. <laughs> yeah. Um, a mermarathon. Mermaid, <laughs> perfect. For the very last day for all of us <laughs> slackers. But uh, in the place of that for today, we are doing portfolio review. So yeah. we'll be choosing two people who submit their portfolios to the tab on the right in the Behance viewer. What time will that be? It'll be at 2.30ish, so in like an hour. In like an hour? Awesome, I think yeah. we'll have just enough time to wrap this thing up. Cool, that'll I give hope. proper time to give like 10 minutes to each person instead of just brushing them off, which yeah. is not fair. <laughs> no. Yeah, we'd love to uh, be able to give good feedback and. As said, any questions you have regarding work, art, life that you want to share now, definitely here for it. Or just the process that's going on to my right. Yeah, oh, now's the time for uh, food puns. Food puns, please. There's so many. Right, so are those three plates? Three plates, could be more. They're Is there a third that hasn't been in, has not shown up yet? 
Uh, I was thinking maybe something taller back here, like a vase. Oh, not like an eel? Could be a vase of eels. Oh. Days. <laughs> hey, hi from Canada. Hello, everyone joining us. This is so fun, you guys. I know, right? Um, I'm gonna scroll back a little bit, because I think a lot of comments and stuff came through with that pillow excitement. <laughs> Woohoo! I know, pillows. It's a very good comfort in life. That's another uh, way to deal with clients, have a pillow to <laughs> a whisper dog. your sorrows into, <laughs> or scream into. <laughs> Have you guys seen that Tumblr? It's Clients from Hell. It's just so many oh, good yeah. stories, and it's so liberating because you know you're not the only one who has these reactions <laughs> and deals mm -hmm. with people. I think somebody, I saw somebody say, oh, I make the logo bigger. That's a classic. Yep. Or like anytime they make it really detailed and you're like, you know when this shrinks down, no one's going to know what any of this is, right? Ooh, yeah. All right, I think I really liked crab cake, so. Reverb has under the sea suck in his mind. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Uh, I think it starts off good, and then by like number 100, it's probably bad. Oh man, I've had that. Like when I was in Disneyland a long time ago, it lasted for the whole freaking day. They were actually just following you around. Yeah, I mean, it is everywhere. <laughs> but I do a pretty good, uh, uh, not frog, crab voice. I'm John. Not going to do it now. Shyster? Says, still have to finish my Inktober, let alone Mermaid. <laughs> I think I got like halfway through last Inktober and then burnt out. So yeah, I'm there with you. I knew myself well enough to not attempt it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot. Man, I see some people I know in here. That's so nice, guys. They're all here to support you. Yay! And troll you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think this thing needs some crab claws, because it's a crab cake. Oh, uh, it's like a cake cake. Yeah, but with crab claws, because it's a crab crab. Will the food also have party hat? Uh, no, that might be too much. You've got to be tasteful Just with your party hat placement. In smaller and smaller. <laughs> that would be a cool idea for a gift, though. Um, Constantino says, should be an underwater pillow fight. <laughs> Which would be a very slow. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you ever have those dreams where you're like trying to run and it's like trying to run through water? That's just life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Also, John says, "Make it pop." Another classic logo question or make it art pop. Feedback. What does that mean? Make it pop. All right, Especially I'll put an outer glow something. around mm. it. <laughs> I think that it's just a different way of saying bigger. Yep, or just. Put some hot pink outlines on that <laughs> on that stuff. Reverb says, I have a couch and TV to keep clients entertained because they're all children. I added the children part, but oh. that's my assumption. <laughs> yeah. um, children pay me for logos for their future brand. You know, with today's youth, I don't think that's that far off. Um, no. Do we have any other food ideas? I don't know, yeah. Throw your food ideas no, in here. No, we cannot hear We actively crab just boys. have crab cake. All right. Um, I got the uh, limpets and Limp cream. <laughs> limpets and like crumpets and tea. So maybe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. limpets are triangles, right? Jack asks, can we hear your crab voice? Did you ever promote a crab voice? I said I, I do a good um, Sebastian voice. Oh, really? Because my crab voice would just sound like guttural choking on spit. <laughs> well, no, I, <laughs> is that what crabs do? <laughs> kind of, right? They like froth. Do crabs froth? Some of them, they get the little. I don't think you're supposed to eat those ones. Oh my I don't know. Gosh. Maybe maybe it's because like there's that Simpsons episode when he gets the lobster, Pinchy, and Homer's just like holding him like a pet, and then when they do a close up of his face, he's like. Oh, 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 I think just that's just a, him. that's just animals that have rabies. Uh, maybe his lobster. Can crabs rabies. get rabies? Oh, these are things I don't really want to know. Um, these are just going to be kind of ice cream cone shaped limpets. Maybe put some cream on top. Mm. Um, we're getting close to putting them all together. A chocolate fountain? Ooh. Can we chocolate fountain it into a sea-like version of a chocolate fountain? Wouldn't that be Cat loaf. real messy? Long Island Cat iced loaf. tea? <laughs> um, Pink donate. Pink donuts are good, yeah. Pizza. What would go on the pizza if you're in the sea? 
Uh, actually, last night, my really weird friend got anchovy pizza. Like, who does that? Come on. Um. <laughs> Not only weird people, surprisingly enough. The Swedes would absolutely do some anchovy pizza. I Unless don't... they're all weird. Well, I don't know. They I did make ABBA. <laughs> I do love ABBA. They I love are pretty ABBA. pretty great. Um, I am the dancing queen. Shell cookies, French croissant. Ooh. Kind of like a shell pastry. Shell cookies are pretty good. But I feel like she's wearing shells. Crabbies. So... Definitely the way you'd say rabies for a crab. <laughs> crabbies. And he would be very crabby because <laughs> he would have rabies. Yeah, let's just make a pile of, of all these things. Some shell cookies. I'm going to put some on the side. Harvey says, watching this has really piqued my interest in drawing. Glad we could contribute. That's the dream, Harvey. I'm so glad. I'm done. <laughs> Let's I've... drop the pen and walk away. Yeah, <laughs> pen drop. Sea cucumber sandwiches. Ooh, I think there's definitely a sea cucumber thing in there ooh, somewhere. That's, that's pretty good. I really like that one. Sea cucumbers are so weird, though. Oh, my They're gosh. They're kind of cute in their own way. Yeah, squishy, kind of like the pillow that... Ha who won? Oh, uh, the guy who's, <laughs> whose cool name started with an A. <laughs> no, a K. A? It's a K. You know who you were. Constantinos. <laughs> yes. The cucumbers are squishy like that. Um, Thankfully, not as soft. You're just using a sea cucumber as a pillow. Don't they like squirt out their guts if you touch them? Yeah. Because I went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Does your pillow a ton. do that? Um, time to wake up. <laughs> there goes all the fluff. Um, that would get me up. Oliver says pizza with strawberries and chocolate, which sounds okay if there weren't cheese and sauce. It's not super nautical, but I no. just as a would, pizza. I would try that. Yeah. What do sea cucumbers look like? They're kind of dark teal, I think. Yeah. They kind of. But everything in the ocean is kind of like a dark teal. <laughs> so who Especially knows if actually. Especially if you really squint. Um, and they have like funny things on their ends, right? Like almost like, I don't know. Th these are super simple. They're going to be small anyway. Um, <laughs> so let's just. Ooh, they should have like toothpicks with olives on them, right? That's what classy sandwiches have. It's true. Ooh, I'm so excited to Did put this all together. Did you get your peanut together. butter sandwich with an olive toothpick in it? Peanut butter sandwich? Peanut butter jelly? With an olive? That oh, I'm not bad. saying you should actually do this. You just said it's fancy when you do that. Oh, yes. <laughs> so if you want your kid to be classy. Just put olives in all the things yeah. and make sure they know how not to eat toothpicks. Because we were talking. Does this taste like class? We were talking earlier about how I mean, not here, but about how the Heimlich was invented because mm -hmm. people were just bad at eating. Yeah. <laughs> they had a choking epidemic, and they're oh, like, gosh. "Oh, we got to figure this one out. Let's start by punching people." Oh, this isn't how this works. Let's adapt this into some other form. What if I clasp my fist and pull? Oh man. Peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich. That's pretty good. By Dewey. That's a good one. Isn't that from SpongeBob? Oh though? man, Reverb says it too. Yeah, I think they also milk the jellyfish Ooh, to make I, jelly. That's that's sad. What if the table was a jellyfish? Oh yeah, but then I'd have to animate that and float too, and yeah. we're running out of time, guys. Um <laughs> how about some seaweed? Actually, I think there's a Kyle Kyle brush. Called for, seaweed brush? For seaweed. Let's take check it out. Kyle thinks of everything. Um yeah, I think I saw some people using it when they were drawing earlier in the week. Yeah, look at that. Underwater vine. Mm. Let's see. It might be too detailed. Uh, yeah, it... Um, That's pretty good. It's pretty good, but... It's, not, it's a form of kelpie seaweed. Yeah, I think if it had fewer leaves, like my... The whole drawing is pretty simple, so I think I'll just outline this stuff real quick. Speaking of all this weird food, we should do a future side quest stream of just eating weird food that people have proposed. <laughs> that would, would be pretty absolutely fun. Absolutely, do that. It's like Nightmare Iron Chef. <laughs> Jeff asks, "Is there a brush for fuzz?" For fuzz. Oh fuzz. man, I've spent hours in my current drawing, presumably making fuzz. Fuzz. Uh, what kind of fuzz? Like that kind of fuzz? Like hair fuzz? I mean, it totally depends on... Like stuff that ends up on your shirt fuzz, <laughs> which I call puggies for some reason. Puggies, that's kind of cute. And yeah, my parents came up with it, and now it's just stuck. Haha, <laughs> because uh. that's what... Yep. We'll be here all week. Well, uh, we were here well, all week. <laughs> yeah. This is the end of the week, I guess. Is it going to look weird if these don't move? I think that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did the stuff in the background of Scooby-Doo ever move? 
Except for the fog. The fog sometimes like had a transparent hover. Oh, that's right. But okay. stuff in the background was very static. So. Jeff says, it's a secret really, but it's a Muppet. You're drawing we'll a Muppet? finish drawing soon. <gasps> Muppets aren't super fuzzy unless, well, depends. If it's like a human Muppet, it's not. But if you're yeah, there's, there's a, like a fuzzy Wazzy Muppet. There's a big variety of Muppets. Very fuzzy. <laughs> or the, who's the big hairy one with the big nose from? Oh, um, I mean, there's Animal. Who's but a smaller, the one that's hairy like the one. Huge one? I don't know his name, but I'm a huge Jim Henson yeah. fan, despite not knowing his name. Um, Jim Henson, you just said it. No, the, the, no, the fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's send this over to Photoshop and see if we can try to scrap this together. Might have to come back for some adjustments, but that's part of the process. Jeff says, "Not easy being green, as if it were a hint." Uh, so he's clearly drawing. No, Blue's we know Clues. who Kermit the Frog no, is. No, Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues? No, it's not. <laughs> I'm just misguiding you. Did you guys, yeah, take a look at my laptop background. I need you all to look at my cat. This is Marty. He's it important. also looks like he's about to eat both of us. Wait, go back. <laughs> um, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's a little <laughs> bit alarming. Um, so I'm going to send this from my iPad to my Photoshop. Vampire Cat is right. He's got... Such teeth. Oh Would my god. Would that be like a were cat? You just turn into a house cat if you get bit by him? <laughs> like, oh, I know. We gotta figure out how to become human again. Sweetums is the large Muppet who eats people. Oh, thank you. It's a, actually a really good name. I forgot about that. All right. Um, look at this. All right. Um, so now we're gonna create not a frame animation down here. But a video timeline. Oh god, different than last time. Different. So I'm gonna slap these all in one folder so I don't get them confused. And Where this did that is term what? Slap. It's a quick action. I know. And it's effective usually. <laughs> um, so now comes the part that sometimes gets a little bit more technically iffy. But I what I do is I just drag these .mov files right in, and look, they show right up. So we can move her around, um, put her to the side, and then you just hit enter to place her. Um, and now you can see down here, she's got this little video clip. Um, she's a real girl. <laughs> so I'm gonna drag the reverse merm in. And look, they're the same length because we made the same number of frames and timed them the same way. <laughs> so here they are meeting at last. <laughs> that rock oh, so is... conveniently ready for sit. Yeah, I, I did plan that out a little bit. Um, let's put her a little to the side here. And we've got Float T, which is the name of, I gave to this guy. <laughs> got T floating. Um, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Is this a good place for the T? Yeah. I love when a plant comes together. Um... Are these all my food layers? Okay. Just gonna merge these so I can move the table around. Oop. There's the food. Maybe the table should go in front? But that's gonna cover the toesy. Yeah, we'll work around that. Maybe. If the table's too far for him to reach <laughs> as well. Yeah, all right. Because I want this tea to be right here. So now... Everyone's very excited. <laughs> yeah, video timeline. So I've uh, shortened this guy. This is the slider that kind of defines the end of the video. And thankfully, all of them seem to be the same length. So it's going to be kind of anticlimactic and really short because it's just one loop. But I'll show you guys how to um, increase that length, especially if you want to post it someplace like Instagram, which requires a four second minimum. So let's see. For those listening, there were hand gestures. Yay! All right. So it moves all together. And another benefit of this video timeline, let me make this a little bit bigger. So I told you guys before that I wanted a uh, normal mermaid to kind of move up and down a little bit. And I think maybe I'll make the T move up and down a little bit as well. So auto select the mer normal merm down here. And there's this little carrot that reveals some more options in the video timeline. And it's similar to other programs. So if you've used, I think, After Effects, yeah, this I think is it's very something similar. 
I but, mean, they definitely pulled the same kind of like key framing like interface. Yeah, so the key framing makes simple movement really, really easy. So I'm gonna hit transform to drop a point right here. And if you see these little like small mountain, big mountain down Technical here. Terms. That's a slow oh, that's what <laughs> they are. But that's a slider to kind of this isn't changing the length, it's just changing sort of zooming in so it looks longer. So I'm gonna go to about halfway through. What is that, right here? And I'm gonna just tab her up. One, two, three, four. Go to the end, drop another transform point. Um, Robots in disguise. And go one, two, three, four. And she's disappeared, but that's because it's like right on the brink there. So let's see what that did. Uh, so now she goes up and down. Woohoo! And uh, if you're worried about your animation at this point, because it looks kind of clunky, that's because it uh, the frame rate might not be displaying exactly the right way because your computer is working really, really hard to give you everything you want, but might not always do that. So it's like once you export it to QuickTime, it just makes it all smoothified. Yep. So let's see. Let's do the same sort of thing for this teacup. Float T. So we'll drop a transform point. What you got? What? what? Something? No. Okay. Oh, I mean, there's a. Daniel asking, where did this inspiration come from? Well, uh, in the art community, in some places, there's mermaid, in which every day you're supposed to draw a mermaid, and it's a great prompt to get you drawing every day, and there's different themes for different months, like Inktober. Uh, and I think mermaids look chilly, so I wanted to draw not just a mermaid, but also a reverse mermaid. Um, and that's <laughs> what we've done. And I had tea parties as a kid with my best friend Laurel, so that's where that inspiration came from. And then a lot of the other inspiration came from people Those in the two chat. characters inspired by you and Laurel? Yeah, I'm definitely the reverse berm. <laughs> <laughs> also, Jeff was saying, I finished Weaker about a month or two ago. Animal and Swedish Chef are my favorites. Ah, uh, hooper de whooper de. <laughs> what, what would you say your favorite Muppet is? Shoot, um. I mean. I always like the Science Bros, uh, Meeker. Um, Kermit's really hard to beat. Like, I, I, I identify with Kermit in a big way. Um, especially the, yay! <laughs> uh, all right, so we've done it. <laughs> Going just back to gifts. It's a good <laughs> one. One cycle here. And if I scroll this back and forth, I think it works out pretty good. Um, make sure this end point is right at the end there. So now I'm going to say export this as another video, so it kind of puts it all in one place. Inception. Um, oh, and by the way, if you're fine with this being your finished product, you don't need it to loop longer, you can just export it as a GIF right from here. Um, so export. Render video all together now. Um, Dot MOV. I think it'll put it automatically. Interesting that it all comes back around to the yellow submarine. <laughs> Man, I love that animated movie. Yeah, it's so it weird. is super weird, but <laughs> I own a DVD of that, and I own a DVD extension player so that I can watch it. <laughs> um, I think at this point it might be fine to save it as um, an H264, which will put it as an MP4, which is mentioned first stream. Yeah, which I mentioned in the first stream because that's the only movie format I think Instagram uh, accepts. So it's exporting. Here it goes. Also is the what are you drinking question for myself. I'm not drinking anything. No. There's this path water to get inspired by this oceanic drawing. <laughs> that sounds so hip. I don't know what path water is. It's available. Oh shoot, you know what? I actually don't like the color of the sand. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Sand doesn't like the color of you. <laughs> you know, I can I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just noticed that her tail isn't. Oh, it's kind of yeah. getting lost. It's getting lost a little bit. What color should the sand be? No, that's ugly. Mm. Sand can be many colors. Marigis. Yes. Do you photograph? I do, yeah. Um, I go on hikes a ton and um, 
I lived with a girl who was a wedding photographer, so I kind of bummed some tricks off of her. So I do portrait photography a little bit. Did you crash weddings to take photos? Um, I am shooting one of my friend's <laughs> weddings in a couple of months. Super excited for that. Yeah, editing. Uh, I edit my photos in camera raw, so you know, bring it all back to Photoshop. Um, actually, you know what, maybe... Actually, you know, I rendered it, and I think in the final thing, I'll show you some tweaks. So I've just pulled this new file into Photoshop, and it opens up al already in the video timeline. So I'm going to shorten this down. And if you just duplicate the layer, you'll see another loop pops up. I'm pointing to my screen. You can't, you can't see that. <laughs> so more loops show up. So now we're at two seconds. Do that a few more times. Now it's at four seconds, which is absolutely perfect. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, make this smaller. Make this bigger, maybe too big. So it's, you can see this This red number down here means it's not playing at the exact frame rate. Um, and there we go. Oh, I think the cup had a little glitch there. So we can go back here. Poor old glitch cup. <laughs> see what happened there. Yeah, I don't know. People are asking about fish sticks. Fish sticks? Oh, that would have been a good one. A little As bit to, morbid. Like, what they would look like. However, I can only imagine the fish sticks that exist already being like the frozen tartar sauce dipping style fish sticks. I do like the Trader Joe's ones. They're pretty good. Just gonna redo this real quick. Kevin says, what about a few bubbles in the background moving up? A few bubbles? Can do. I just wanted to get the base down and then we can embellish as much yeah, as we want. Yeah, but Kevin's your client. He doesn't <laughs> care about what you're doing right now. He All just right, wants Kevin. the just wants what he wants. That's fine, Kevin. We're here to get <laughs> bubbles for you. They're blowing bubbles underwater. <laughs> That's how fish work. They get oh, yeah, oxygen absolutely. from their gills. Art is where you can choose not to follow science. Yeah, well they are having a tea party and they are yes, well, yeah. everything about this. <laughs> Dewey says make the bubbles pop. Pop? I can do yeah, that. Make it pop. Again with that client talk. <laughs> oh, that's funny because bubbles do pop. What? Bubbles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to explain this to you. <laughs> well, bubbles are a thing. Um, yep. Make the bubbles pop. Timo would love to see a crab or small shrimp creep in the background. Cuddle, scuttle around. Trying to steal some food from this tea party. <laughs> that would be super cute. Crab thief. Um, yeah, let's see what we have time for. I'll put in as much as we <laughs> have time for. Those will all be for. last minute. I mean, the, the more time we have for that stuff, the more Yellow Submarine it will become. Yeah. I do want to save, Sergeant Pepper. <laughs> save time for uh, um, some portfolio reviews, though. All together, two. And yeah, everyone who is joining us, we're here doing day three with Katya, who is now working on the animation portion of our Mer Tea Party. Mm -hmm. The bottom of the sea. There's not yet music, but you can imagine under the sea, your head. But also, we're doing portfolio reviews later on. So in about 30 minutes or so, we'll be going through two portfolios that we've chosen to kind of be able to give feedback on both art and the portfolio organization. And that, if you're in the Behance channel, there's a portfolio review tab to the far right, and you can submit your portfolio through the link that's provided down below. Bring to me your work. I'll cast oh, down look at my all those opinions. Colors. Yeah, so th I'm right now doing a, a GIF uh, a what? to show. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> a GIF, um, a GIF uh, for that one internet guy. So uh, just so we can see the looping a little bit better, because you can do forever or once or any other number in between. <laughs> um, save that out. See how that looks, and then we'll add in all the other crap that you guys want. It'll be super, super extra fun. Awesome. It's like the garage sale of items. It's like <laughs> vacuum cleaner. Yeah, the one thing about saving GIFs that are illustrations is that they tend to take a while to load, so I tend to just crop the size in a lot. So this was originally like 3,000 pixels wide because I was drawing it fairly high res. Mm -hmm. So just save yourself some waiting time and make it smaller because when it ends up on the internet it's gonna be a little bit degraded and also a lot of platforms don't even let large video file sizes a lot of screens aren't even that yeah. big 
We're not even caught up to ourselves. Check that out, guys. So that's the gift. Oh, it's so smooth. And it's going, and there's not a ton of <laughs> bumping around. I think in, in the final version, I will change the sand color so we can see those toes pop a little bit more. I'll make the toes pop um, by changing the background color. Um, yeah, this was uh, my minimum goal for today. So we've awesome. hit it. Yeah, let's now we just get sit here. extra. <laughs> now we just watch this for the rest. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to hit. Let's out popcorn. <laughs> yeah, uh, popcorn shrimp. Yeah. Hey, um, can we get a laugh track in here? <laughs> you can get slow clap. Slow clap. You can get en any gifts we want. So do you guys want to see, um, <laughs> 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 um, do you guys want to see bubble or a uh, scuttly creature or something else? Because I can definitely throw something else in here. Yeah, what's, do you want to choose between those two or just have like an open or, you know, Game something else that's in the realm of possibility. <laughs> don't make the bubbles... <laughs> uh, Dewey is saying, don't make the bubbles actually pop. It was a throwback to the bad clients. Well, I mean... Well, maybe that's like a weird meditative way of thinking about getting rid of the bad clients from your memories. <laughs> Just is letting them let drift them go, off and pop. let them pop. <laughs> um, so we have catfish, yell sub, fish cat. Dory, Nessie. <laughs> Nessie is like a very tiny baby. Did Nessie have a childhood? Just became giant adult. Nessie, Nessie the early the days. Day. I don't know. I never read their memoirs. Yeah, I know the memoir of Nessie. Actually, aren't memoirs from a specific point in somebody's life and biography is their, their entire, entire life? Thing. I think that's but what. If I you're Mark Twain, you just had your entire thing be two books. Hmm. So um, you had a lot to say. We'll do a colored background so we can see what we're drawing here. Um, bubbles are super easy, so I'm just gonna do a few of those right now. Easy way out. And we're gonna do... Maybe a normal fish wondering what the hell is going on here. A, no <laughs> a normal fish and a normal person just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> it's just, if you had a, like a planet Earth photographer just in the background being like, and we've discovered the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> um, can I draw circles today? I didn't warm up by drawing 100 circles like I normally do. Well, while you're doing that, if anyone has more questions about life, art, experience working in the arts, whatever it is, pass them along. We're here to answer all your questions. I mean, I'm not technically, but <laughs> you are. Yes, I am. That's what I'm here for. Looking at all these movie posters in the back, what are some of your favorite old movie posters? Old movie Since posters? that's kind of like an event thing. Uh, yeah, shoot, I don't know if I've got a catalog of them in my brain. Um, I mean, I really liked like the early animation ones where they just didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, some like the really old ones, like Godzilla, are just so iconic. Mm -hmm. um, the old Superman one. <laughs> also, the old Superman trailer is just like super goofy. It's just like the logo for a really long time with the music and then just kind of stops and you're like, hmm? Um, Voodoo says, maybe every once in a while a fishing hook can dip down. Oh, <laughs> that'd be fun. If someone's trying to like fish food out of the table. <laughs> Mary just wants to know more about you. Like, what do you like to create? Maybe outside of art, too. Yeah. What kind of, do you create other things? Do you, th you guys think I do anything else? No. <laughs> I mean, I don't, but. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think work-life balance is super important, so I try to get out and go hiking, and um, like I said, go take photos different places. I live in Portland, um, so I'm really close to a bunch of beautiful stuff. Um, Smith Rock and the Painted Hills, uh, National Monuments are, just a day trip away. Uh, even closer are places like Savi Island. Um, let's see, sorry, I'm trying to focus on the bubble thing too. Uh, yeah, I mean, in my early days, I wanted to be a concept artist for Pixar because I love storytelling. Um, I do still dabble in creative What's your favorite writing. Pixar? Favorite one? Oh, I mean, 
I really love the atmosphere in Ratatouille. Um, and I love food, so that helps. Um, shoot, but that's really hard. Toy Story 3 was really good. Um, oh. What? I guess the question was for me. I totally agree with the first <laughs> part of that. Um, well, tell us. I just, I'm here on a job. Um, I do a lot of poster work, both in music and event space things, logos and branding, brand identity, uh, comic books, album art, concept art, kind of anything that's artistic that seems like it's for a good cause and is fun to work on with cool people, I'm totally into. Uh, I went to a fine art school and went through a, I don't know, eight year period of doing UX UI kind of 60% of the time, but now I've left to start a clay design with Sarah, who was here on the previous stream to do mostly more art stuff like this and get back into the community. So we're reaching out as much as we can to get more involved in that while still doing UX UI, but being able to kind of have a good balance of both worlds again. Um, yeah, so that's primarily what I create nowadays, which is very nice. I feel like I'm able to get back into the arts more. That's awesome. Meet cool people doing cool drawings and stuff. Me? Yeah. Like me. <laughs> Just like you. Um, so I, I did the bubble and I sent it over and I think saw, I saw somebody else say like, tentacles coming around the rock? Just like saying hello or something? Um, As tentacles do. Ooh, I'll do the fish hook because that'll be really easy to do with the um, uh, video timeline. Animation. Those are dark gray, right? Dark gray, maybe kind of barnacly. Yeah. I'll trick him. All fish love eating barnacles. <laughs> kind of like a harpoon edge. Granted, if it's like weird dessert foods and stuff at the tea party, is that what they're gonna hook these fish with? <laughs> just like a slice of cake. That would be on a super hook? funny, just like a, a, a pink donut. Get the Homer fish. <laughs> Man, this could be a whole series. <laughs> We're actually doing a. TV show pitch secretly right now. <laughs> Should be kind of rusty and gross. Just like a fish likes it. Yum. Mmm, rusty gross hook. Mm -hmm. Richard Wang on YouTube suggests a clam that opens up to reveal a pearl somewhere. Oh, nice. Thanks, Voodoo. Man, are people watching this on YouTube too? Yeah. Crazy. They're Hi not guys. on the Behance channel, but they're there <laughs> watching. So hello to everyone on YouTube as well. Awesome. We'll just be documented there forever. Yeah, and hi to all of your, <laughs> you uh, future folks. Hopefully the by future. now the finished product will be up someplace for you to go see. Compare anyway. what changed. Yeah, I mean hopefully we'll get a finished thing. What are your feeling on board games? I love board games. I mean, not all you of them. You answered correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, which ones are your favorites? Games. Um, I really like Balderdash. That's the one where you make up different definitions for, they're, they're real words, but they're really uncommon words. So you make up definitions and then everybody votes on which definition they think is right. And the real one is in there. So if you get it, the actual definition, you get extra points. But if you lied convincingly to enough people, then you get mm. all those points. And I really like lying, but I don't think it's morally correct. So I like board games because that's where I can lie. So with like Monopoly a clear is your jam too? I love Monopoly. Okay. <laughs> or uh, was it Secret Hitler? What's that? Or the werewolf one where it's like you're trying to. Oh, I'm all so good at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, my favorite thing is playing with a whole group of new people who don't know. What a werewolf is? That I'm really good at lying. And then I try to like <laughs> play all dumb. Yeah. But now you guys all know, so nobody's ever gonna play board games with me again. <laughs> yeah, give away all your secrets. Um, so for this one, it's not really animated, so I'm just gonna do an image. You just got challenged by Voodoo Val, who said, I've never lost a game of Monopoly. All right, Voodoo Val, let's do it. <laughs> um, I think I just airdropped myself something. Yeah, I heard that and immediately went to my phone. It went to your now phone? I'm like, wait a minute, this is an Android phone. It doesn't make that noise. <laughs> uh... Maybe I will send it to desktop because boop, 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 boop. I have to accept the airdrop. Oh, you know what's really fun is going to a public place and airdropping stupid pictures to anybody who's <laughs> left their airdrop on. 
I fully endorse that. But don't come to me if you get arrested. And don't send creepy pictures. <laughs> Only fun, family-friendly, goofy pictures. Yeah, I was uh, sending people at the Apple Store pictures of my cat, and I didn't get kicked out, so. You just see people like, oh. Nobody accepted it. Oh, really? Every, everybody rejected it. I mean, fine, but look at this face. Um, they just start looking around nearby to see if they can find the cat. <laughs> Who's just taking selfies and sending them? All right, so here we are back in this. So I've put my fish hook in. Should I just- Oh no, Shauna. Shauna what? Why? What's wrong with Shauna? It says, OMG, someone did that to me on the plane. I received a really creepy no. photo from someone. No, oh yeah, reject that Daddy. stuff. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's when you find them to throw your phone at them. <laughs> or to kick them off the airplane, you know? <laughs> just Put them in the brig. Pull a Dave Chappelle from Con Air. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, all planes have brigs, like in Star Trek, right? Yeah. Um, hook. All right, so here, so this is a non-animated element, but we're going to animate it. So it's off the screen up here right now, and I'm gonna just nudge it down. Hopefully I have the right layer. Oh, no, I was doing the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what? Oh, I was moving the table. Whoops. I'm a professional. I know how to do things. Still make mistakes. I get lost in my own file structure sometimes. Yeah. And the good thing about having a cat is, and being somebody who works remotely, is if I accidentally video call my boss while I'm in my pajamas, which has happened, I just say, oh shoot, my cat just stepped on the keyboard. <laughs> and, which is true more often than not, but. Or you're having a video call and the cat just decides to crawl in front. Oh, on the keyboard and that's like, his, oh yeah, this is him. My big monitor is super warm, so he absolutely does that. It's his favorite spot. And I have a lint roller sense. for my computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so now I've got the hook. I'm gonna scoot this down. Good job, Shauna reported it. He's on it. <laughs> reported what? He sent it to Twitter. The whole <laughs> thing from the airdrop. Oh, great. Creepiness. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then we're gonna scoot this back up. Oh. Should, uh, actually. It's like. Yeah, let's have it go down. I mean. Where did it just go? Now Legmer seems more confused by the hook than anything. <laughs> <laughs> Should we put it in the background? Is it too central? That's a good point. <laughs> um, I mean, that's what's so fun about like animating stuff, guys. Oh, that's the T. Um, is that you can get super playful. Let's put a... Uh, it's almost like playing just Pictionary with yourself. Yeah. And it's... Um, the, the end result is often, because if you're using tools like the video timeline, it's often more unpredictable, unless you're just a super duper pro. But I think it, the unpredictability is kind of fun. Yeah, it's not fun anymore if you're a super duper pro. Yeah, so never practice that. Never much. get good. <laughs> so I'm gonna have it come down and then actually kind of stay for a second before it goes back up so it's not just bobbing. And then maybe it'll come back up here and be off screen for a while. The third star of this play, the hook. Yeah, so let's see. Do, 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 do. And usually I don't put a lot of stuff like this in animated loops just because it's gonna go over and over and over again, but why not? Fish aren't falling for it every Ooh. single time. You know what we could do based off of the thing that I just said? We can put this in, because it's not interacting with any of the other layers, we can just put this right in on top of the other one so that it does only come once every four loops. Good old drag and drop. Da, da, da. So now it'll come in and out. I think it might be a little glitchy. And then it'll stay, it'll loop again, but the hook will only happen once every four. So there's a ton you can Just do like a song. as you add <laughs> as you add in more and more layers and export. And I don't somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that saving as a dot MOV degrades anything the way that it does if you save a bunch of JPEGs. No. Um, I don't think so. So that's awesome. Use that tool. Also, Anna says, why are you doing this in PS instead of AE? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I started in Photoshop um, 
way, way, when I was just a kid. And uh, I really like being able to illustrate in Sketch and send it, uh, send the 2D frames directly to Photoshop because Sketch and Photoshop um, are so seamlessly connected even though I'm using my iPad and computer. And I'm not, sh I don't think that I can send directly from Sketch to AE. Um, so for the kind of like really short animations that I do, the video timeline is enough. So that's your answer. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, if you can if you can master After Effects, that's awesome. I mean, of the weird interfaces that some of it's showing here in the timeline, that After Effects is like that times ten. Yeah. <laughs> with complexity. But it's super strong and powerful. Is this the all together one? I'm losing track of all my documents. Oh, no. oh here's the bubble. This is the bubble. That's why I couldn't yeah, see anything. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see the white in there. Um, let's add a background behind that. I'm going to create another frame animation real quick. So this was just, this took me, I mean, you saw like two seconds. So we'll see how it works <laughs> out. Um, under pressure. Under pressure. And being deep sea ocean under pressure. That's what I thought you were yeah, going both. for. Mm -hmm. Also, there is about 15 minutes Whew. in which you can still submit, I know, right? That's the pressure. <laughs> to the portfolio review. So if you're in the Behance channel, there is a link to the far right in the portfolio review tab where you can send us the portfolio that you'd like to have Katya look at, give feedback on. We'll choose two people to do that with, so. Yeah. In-depth art critiquing. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you all the right answers to art. All the objective <laughs> truths. <laughs> the ways to make millions just like me. Uh, <laughs> millions of good vibes is what he means to say. Exactly. I am a high, I have a high yield money. of good vibes. <laughs> all the Monopoly money <laughs> that you steal from your little brother because he doesn't know the concept of finance yet. <laughs> Um, Thanks, Jeff. He submitted. Oh, great. And I have Tourette's. <laughs> um, let's see. Crop that in. Anna did not know you could do this in PS. Hey, well, great, yeah. yeah. Photoshop just has thousands and thousands of tools. Um, and that's why I really like that the mobile ones, the mobile apps, tend to be more focused. So Sketch is just all of the stuff I need for um, illustration, which is why I use this more than Procreate, which I know is another very popular one. Mm -hmm. um, because all of my illustration tools and brushes um, are right here in Sketch. And especially like if I was drawing frames in Procreate, I'd have to export them all as um, separate images and then put them all back together and you know line them all up. Um, so yeah, I found a, a groove that I really like. I it's hope. also kind of a good thing with professional is once you find that groove, it's going to save time. Let's see, save as... Also, yes, Oliver, it's too late to win the pillow this round, Sorry. but if you stick around for the next yeah. stream, you'll have another opportunity to win the pillow. And that one is with Daichi, who's coming back to do the last day of his mermaid is with he doing, Kathleen. Is he doing a mermaid? I thought he was doing like islands. Yeah, but of Mermaid, we're still here. Yeah, yeah. Still the month. The last chance. Da, 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 da. All right, let's see if we can pop the bubble in here. Ha, ha, ha. That was not intentional. <laughs> Kevin Worth says, you've never seen Timeline in PS. Not for you, but just generally in that conversation. What is this? <laughs> but I feel like it's one of those things that I sort of recently, or didn't recently, but when I discovered it, it was more by accident. Yeah, if you go to window and look up timeline, it's hidden in there. It's not a default by yeah. any stretch of the imagination. I think the start screen might have a preset for animation. Like when you go to create a new document. Mm -hmm. Actually, I can just show you. Um, let's see if I'm right. The start screen's also yeah. changed a lot. Uh, no, it doesn't have one for animation. I was thinking well, illustration. video, and, or film and video? Does that have a thing? That's... Or is that just... I, yeah. Maybe. I don't know what the um, the tool panel would look like, but you know, go or explore. Or professionals. Or professionals. Um, so 
Let's see, I'm gonna change the sand color real quick. Da, da, da. What color should it be? Maybe just like a darker teal. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would work for making the characters pop. Yeah, yeah. we'll get this guy. Make him pop. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna fill in all of those. I did see the Kathleen drawn as a mermaid. So we did draw that mermaid. What? Daichi. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Does this sand bug you? I, it doesn't bug me. Wait, We're what? gonna do it. This color sand. No, I like it. I it's think color just, palette wise, it feels really nice against your skin. It just hasn't been uh, vacuumed in a while. I mean, we're underwater, so anything could be a bluish green. Yep. It's all toned. Yeah, so let's export this out. Just like those fish legs. <laughs> Render video. Um, let's do, we don't need to do quick time, so we don't need to transparent background because we've got one of those now. Um, all together again, like the Muppet video. Muppet, Muppet movie. I love the Muppet movies. The original one's still really good. Oh, the new one held up. Yeah. Muppet I mean, Treasure Island, anymore. though. My favorite. Definitely. Can we close this one? Oh, shoot. Did I get rid of my hook? I might have. Ah, and I didn't render the background here. Nice, Clamarmic. Just remade the portfolio just for us. Shoot. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm up at Treasure Island for the win. I agree, Shauna. Yeah, I'm really taking a, a gamble here. I can't see anything because it's white on <laughs> background, so I just render the video and do this crapshoot. Meaning something that has chance crab involved, shoot. not actually. Shooting crabs? <laughs> Don't do that either. We're just dropping a bunch of crabs down like the tube that's on construction sites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, get those crabs out of there. We're building a building here. All right, bub. I also normally use dribble oh, for a lot fun. of my portfolio work, but it's it's a little bit limited because you have to constrain it, and yeah. I always have to export, especially um, animations in a certain size. And that's kind of a pain. And it's like a lot of designers looking at designers, which is great for feedback and like some clients, but it's a very specific type of client, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's still a great community. Like being part of that as well as other ones, I think is super beneficial. So there's no reason for slanty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always a reason for slanty mouth, but not for this. Sending the hook Got over hook again. action on the right. Yeah, let's see if the bubble works at all. <laughs> the bubble could pop from that hook. Don't don't uh, give me something crazy. Oh, did I not say this is a transparent file? Let's see. I think I might have gotten a bad black background in there. <laughs> yeah. This is like square void enters them. Oh, I think the presets changed with that. Ma, looking at them. Render video. Uh, yep. Need to be in quick time for mm. that alpha channel goodness. Straight, unmatted, bubble. Go. It's just one little bubble, so it's quick to render. Bub two, project one, sketch. Uh, where should the bubble come? I'm not making this guy fart. I know that was <laughs> talked Damn about. <laughs> this is a classy tea party, fellas. Um, I don't know, should the bubble come from his like mouth region? That'd be kind of funny. But I just imagine the mouth being constantly open. <laughs> Do fish have nostrils? Did I miss that, that yeah. anatomy trait? Maybe his, both of them are on the other side of his face, like a flounder. <laughs> the other side of him is just nostrils. So yeah, so we've got um, to loop this a few more times. Perfect. It's all coming together. It's all coming together, down to the wire. Yeah, you have six-ish minutes left. Wow, okay. There's the hook. Let's grab I mean, that. No pressure. There. <laughs> and we get to portfolio no, stuff. I like pressure. Pressure's good. Okay. Lots um, of pressure. And then we can talk about y'all's work, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be fun. This is a giant hook. That's kind of scary, actually. Or enticing. Mm. <laughs> Position. And let's see. Keyframe it down over here. Let's 
face that out a little bit. It's almost like the hook on a theater stage pulling you away. Oh! We'll have it hover, drop another point. And once you, I mean, it might look kind of confusing to just to watch me do this, but once you get your hands on it, I think it's pretty darn easy to pick up in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And there's tons and tons of videos um, that have been made by Adobe and other users. So many good ones that You're use in on good YouTube, hands. too. Yeah. Adobe's been very good about fostering a very like knowledge sharing mm -hmm. um, community. So there, there that comes in, kind of waits, gets nothing, goes back out. And these little guys down here are the bubbles. So I'm just dropping a few of those here and there. Um, maybe space them out. Let's see. So yeah, you can see the little bubble just coming out of nowhere. Oh, it's so faint. So faint. That's oh. a little, nice little detail. So, and it is popping. It's a little pop. <laughs> um, oh, you know what I didn't do though? I didn't put these at 0 0.1 seconds, but I think it's fine. <laughs> Let's render this out and see what we got. You're down to the three minute, 15 second mark. Yeah, well, this is this is it. We'll watch it for the last two minutes. And then it just becomes a spinning wheel of death. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, let's say this as a GIF because I like that forever loop. But that does take like two minutes to maybe save out because it is, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> the video timeline does tend to take a little bit more brain power from your computer. Um, Depends on its memory. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea of a yellow submarine floating by. <laughs> you could just go home, add all the things you've ever dreamed into it. All the things I've ever dreamed. <laughs> crammed into one animation. I mean, that might sea. not be super strategic for trying to post on Instagram. I could post the same thing over and over and just have it be a spot the difference. The Where's Waldo of GIF. Yeah. Oh, you know what I didn't do is I didn't hit Command Save, so uh -oh. hopefully this doesn't conk out on me. Conk is another pun because a conk is a shell. I always thought it was conch, too. You're so oh, right! No. <laughs> I've lived 25 years <laughs> on this earth thinking that a conk was a shell. Oh, but no. is it? No, I like I'm pretty sure okay. it's a conch shell. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I've had several moments in my life that are very similar. Like I used to think the Swan Lake was actually the Swan Leg, which made sense to young me because it was all about ballet and ballerinas have amazing legs. So why not focus on them? That's true. Swans also have amazing legs. Yeah, the Swan Leg would make just as much sense. It all comes back to the can-can of Swan. <laughs> Oh man, I also used to think hand-me-downs were hammy-downs, because that's just, you know, what you say. Here's your mother's ham. I mean, I never thought ill of ham. I thought that was a nice thing I'd like to get, so hand-me-down. If you just had sense. a ham-shaped gift under the Christmas tree or something. <sighs> yeah, uh-huh. Oh wow, thanks mom. Another ham. <laughs> <laughs> hand-me-down from Santa. Um, man, I hope everybody just went temporarily offline when I said that I thought a conch was it's a shell. It's just a blog post about it. <laughs> oh man. All right, well this is saving up. So somebody start playing that, uh, um, what's it called? Jeopardy music. The do, 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 do. Yep. But as it's going, it's like Because um, it's underwater. Yep, all right, so everybody just I like that they updated the spinning wheel of uh, Rainbow Death. It's nicer to look at now. Oh yeah, now it's got a little bit. Oh. Hey, there it goes. <laughs> Hello, wake up. Uh, final question mark? We're just gonna call it final because that feels good. Uh, Shavon says, I used to go to the Air and Space Museum in DC and wonder who Aaron and was why he had a space museum. <laughs> I love it, thanks for making me feel I not know, alone. Right? <laughs> the English language, very broken. Yeah, and I mean, if it's just something that you've only heard, it makes sense. And on the flip side, if it's a word that you've only ever read and never heard, that can cause all sorts oh, of yeah. problems too. It's um, like I still have that problem with Thor's hammer. <laughs> Mayor? Uh, Mayor? <laughs> Mayor? Um, let's see, where did I put this thing that was titled final? Oh, we hit the deadline. Did we? Yeah, no one can post any more portfolios. Woo. 
look, guys. Oh, and perfect time. There's super duper speedy bubbles, but <laughs> that's how it goes. So uh, <laughs> thanks for watching me make this. Um, there's always more to hash out and more to fix and tune up, like the little color that's on the and thus is art. <laughs> and thus is art. But you know, when this is going to be shrunken, shrinking down shranked. to kind of tiny fied down to like 500 pixels wide, a lot of that stuff really isn't going to matter. Some of those pixels might just get crunched out of existence. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope that you're going to make some animations, some GIF loops. Yeah, GIF I'd love loops. to see what people make out of this. Yeah, and uh, feel free to. Send me a, a note. I, some people who've been on the chat have actually reached out to me, and I've gotten to see them all on Instagram. It's awesome. I love connecting with you guys. Our community. Yay! We're all friends here. Um, is it time? Yeah, I think it's time to do some portfolio reviews. Yeah, I got to get the links. Awesome. Get those links, Logan. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on my email, and I don't have that here. Go get that. <laughs> Um. <laughs> uh oh. Um. Yeah. <laughs> shall I share an anecdote from my life? Yeah, do that. <laughs> um. Oh man, shoot. so many. Comments. I've got to load that in my brain too. Um. The anecdote. Try to think of like. This is your time to rap. To to rap. Uh, yeah, freestyle. No. Mm mm mm. So this one time. Um. I was sitting on a plane, and uh, three seats in front of me was this guy who was wearing this, I mean, I, I figured it was comfy travel style. It was just this ridiculous hat, and it looked like a shower cap, um, but it only had, like it had sequins taped to it. And, you know, nobody was really paying much attention, but it was like really neon. Um, and halfway through the flight, this guy just reaches up and I kid you not, he had like a mouse in there. You know how people don't, they're not allowed to bring their pets on planes. He had a mouse in there and I saw him, honest to God, put a corn chip in there. Like, you know, they pass around the <laughs> snacks and he wasn't even subtle about it. And uh, he was bald too. So he must've felt all those little like mouse claws on his head, which I guess is kind of comforting to know that the mouse is still there. I mean, that's good. But I didn't report <laughs> him because like, what are you gonna do with a mouse on a plane? Okay, I've got him. All right, and just so you know, I just, that did not happen, that was not real, I was just making it up. I was just about to ask what the moral of that story was. <laughs> there was none, so. sorry, I couldn't think of a real story, so I made one up. <laughs> Let's do some portfolio reviews. <laughs>
Nice. I like she that she's got the uh, the bling on her on her skeleton hand. That sweet Frankenstein like color to the skin. Uh huh. Frankenstein's monster. I'm one of I those know. people. And then there's the whole bride. <laughs> um. Uh, nice. Next. Yeah. If there's anything along the way you wanna. Yeah. So. If I, I'm not a comic artist, definitely, but. Your poses are super dynamic and great. Um, I'd love to see maybe some, you, you try to push yourself with the shading a little bit. Like you've got some good light logic going on there. The the shine on his pants, on his pectorals the and blades. face. But yeah, I think you could get even a little bit more detail because your line work is so detailed. Like you've got the hashing on the pants. So maybe try to work some of that in to like the contour of his face to sort of pop out to that depth. Mm -hmm. Really awesome. Say so also when coming to detail stuff in comic book work, if you know Jeff Darrow, there's a lot of hyper detailed pen and ink kind of stuff. Uh huh. Um, which stylistically different than this. However, when it comes to like intricate details using pen, very good source to look at. Mm -hmm. When it comes to like line weight and how color works with lots of detail but still legible. Yeah, and I think that extra maybe maybe even adding. So I think you've got like a base tone and maybe a shadow tone and a light tone. Maybe try to work in some more in between that. I know comics tend to be more simple, but even just wrapping the contour around could add some drama, because this mm -hmm. guy looks like he's ready for drama. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, the shine on the sword is awesome. Yeah, it's... I think when looking at a lot of comic book stuff too, it's like you have the opportunity in a storytelling sense to crop it at certain moments. So I'd be curious to see your work in a context of oh, panel frames, breakdown, yeah. mm -hmm. because then you get the opportunity to focus in on certain subjects, you get to cut off certain areas in a composition if you're focusing on a certain action. Mm -hmm. um, when all these kind of feel more like a pinup or something that's going to be a cover, but something that's in a storyline, I'd love to see how like this would then translate to that. Yeah, awesome. I'm curious if you do your own uh, character designs. I like that this guy's got like a, looks like an arrow in his face, mm -hmm. some red eyes. Sort of Akira-ish with the clown figure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the bright pink sky, I'm super a fan of. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, maybe try to bust out the uh, saturation. Like, you've got a lot of army greens and um, sort of monochromatic stuff in the foreground. So to make the characters kind of match the saturation mm -hmm. might boost up the drama, the contrast of the shadows. But yeah, yeah, it looks like you could do some awesome cover artwork. Another good comic source for when it comes to like energy detailed line with color usage. Um, Paul Pope, whoever he gets to color his work, if it's not himself, does a really good job with that. And that kind of gradient reminds me of that where a really nice poppy color gradient with a lot of heavy black line can work really well. So yeah, if that starts getting into more of the coloring of the clothing and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One big criticism though is I don't think it has enough tiny party hats. <laughs> like all of their heads just no I'm not hat. seeing hats, but you know, I mean. What if you wear a party hat on your nose? Does that count? <laughs> Think then like you beak? are a bird, which you can be if you want Technically be. you've become bird. I really like the uh, action here because you've got the sh sort of shrub shrapnel s soaring down, which, um, and you've got a nice foreshortened knee there. Mm -hmm, I know mm -hmm. that's a rough pose to do. The torso looks awesome. Um, You've got your signature in there. Super yeah. nice. This super feels like a cover. Yeah, like it you does. You can see the title right above. Need some words. This I want to know what this is about. Yeah, exactly. It, this would be a great cover to get me interested to pick up something. Precisely. And I love that you've got the flowers in the foreground and like Ooh. the one flower in the background. Um, pushing that depth is um, gonna just that's a great thing to do. Keep doing it. Totally. And that's one of the things that I feel in the comic book world is very crucial when talking to clients, or the editors in that case, is like getting a cover that's gonna stand out on the shelf in comparison to all the other covers. Something minimal like this works really well. Definitely. Huh, is that the <laughs> end? Did I skip something? Oh, there we go. There's some more. Folk metal. <laughs> that's so charming. <laughs> um, nice, lots all these of lots lost going instruments. on. Super fun. It's real nice with this black vignette around it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think you can even um, bust up the contrast a little bit more mm -hmm. with like the fire being super bright. There's also a like a limited palette option to 
might be worth trying out where if the sky is like a cool color and everything in the shadows is cool and then everything around the fire kind of has a similar orange tone to it, including what's being lit on the figures. Mm -hmm. Cause this seems like they're all kind of separately chosen as like this character would be this color. But once you put a tone over that, how that kind of affects like the mood overall. So you get this like really spot on warmth section compared to the rest of the cool area outside of it. Yeah, I'd love to see um, what you could do with a limited palette because it seems like you've got a great understanding of the figure and you're totally into detail and line work, but just trying to see what you can do with like five colors and six characters, that would be awesome. Um, <laughs> But yeah, overall, I mean, your work is really consistent. So yeah. if I were to come to you to hire you, I'd know exactly what I'm getting, which is comforting to, to clients. Totally. Nice, and you've got a good handle on backgrounds too, it seems like. Good placement of the horizon line. That's kind of one of the things in comics lots of people are scared of is mm -hmm. backgrounds. Yeah. Even though it's crucial for storytelling. Just get like a half tone color yeah. behind the characters. He says something crucial. <laughs> but nice, like I love the, the hint of the clouds. Um, they, they, they're not fully formed clouds. It's just enough, but it doesn't distract. That's perfect. Um, I think there's time for looking at the last one real quick. Awesome. Ooh, I don't know what's going on there, but it's dramatic and it's dark. I mean, the color in this one definitely implies that really well. Mm -hmm. I love the added red to con sort of contrast the green. Is that me dinging? <laughs> I think so. Um, I'm not, I don't have my phone. <laughs> um, awesome, yeah, this is, a, like, you've got a really good flair for drama, too. I would, I would trust you with my dramatic cover ideas, for sure. Yep, not my phone. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, thanks so much. Um, the the main things I, I guess I would say is try working on uh, bumping up your highlights to match the quality, the complexity of your line work. Um, and maybe show, I, I like the idea of showing some, what some frames would look like, because I know that's the bread and butter of comics. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you can do so much with like interesting frame layouts. There are people who just do covers, but depends on what you want to do. Um, and again, with the whole like showing is, the best way to get the client intrigued by it. So if you end up doing panels and covers, they're like, oh boy, you can do both. So, awesome, thanks so much thanks for sharing. Thanks so much. And then there's Tima. Hey Tima. Completely different style. Nice, all right, so freelance illustrator, graphic designer, and you scrolled <laughs> before I could Oh, you. sorry. <laughs> graphic designer, creative writer, sharp bubble. Sharp bubble? Cool. <laughs> Um, from Baltimore, you've got a, your link there, that's great. Oh, that being the company, Sharp Bubble. Nice. So if anyone wants I like to that. check it out, <laughs> it's a good name. Um, right away, it looks like you've got an awesome sort of flat graphic style. Um, it's got a really nice limited color palette. I have a feeling that you might have done some of the mermaids that we saw. Yeah, that one that was like near the bottom. Yeah, or like that was the mermaid going into the ship container or whatever. Yeah, or the yeah. So okay, right off the bat, Thanks. consistent style, amazing. I could recognize you from just seeing your work twice, <laughs> um, if I'm right. I think I am. Uh, your and color there's a use. Lot of it. I really like these limited palettes. Yeah. yeah, I really like the color of this one. Yeah, can you click on it? I want to see. I can. Nice. The shapes are so interesting, and that layering. Yeah. I feel like the this is kind of like the good combination of a minimalist idea that carries the story across done in a way that your focus is very clear as to what you're supposed to be looking at and the whole choice of the composition. Yeah, feels I mean, really nice. restraint is hard. I think it could be super easy to just add on a ton of stuff when it might not necessarily strengthen the composition. Mm -hmm. I have that urge a lot of times, but this is simple and clear and I love it. Totally. Great use of texture in the background subtly. Is there another one you wanna drill into real quick? Yeah, how about Queen of the Night? Uh, up there. There it is. Yeah, is that Magic Flute? It's like um, a storybook style. Nice. You should look into risograph printing if you haven't. Yeah. That's a really cool, uh, you, can, you can actually print digital 
copies of your image layers and then print them, sort of like screen printing. I think your, your work would be amazing for that. Yeah, and I mean all these like little color happy mistakes, kind of going back to the whole Bob And the Ross overlap, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. I like, like that the overlap is, is visible in and a And that the crown there. is kind of like overlapped clearly. All yeah. that stuff is like That's what? close enough to a party hat. Yeah. <laughs> the king of all parties being queen. the king. Queen? Queen? Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's right there. It looks like you might have hand lettered that too, which is an amazing skill that I wish I had. Yeah, it's really nice hand lettering too. Yeah, for this kind of work, what a what an asset to have. Um, can you scroll back up to the info? Uh huh. Illustration, art direction, editorial. Yeah, it looks very editorial. Uh, what about uh, Fast Love? That's super cute, playing on the. Uh, the, uh, he loves me. He loves me not. Daisy, um, plucking. Wow, it's such a simple. Yeah, you've definitely got the editorial concept mm -hmm. communication down really well. Um, shoot, to, to the point where I'm struggling to find something to improve on. Um, I mean, you've got examples with typography, without typography. Um, can you X out of this one? Mm -hmm. I see more. <laughs> yeah, I think the one thing I would say from the overview is I'd love to know the context of like these since the style does look different than like the creation of Eve or Heroes of Our Time, which like very much kind of look like the ones we've looked at. But then like Fat Cat, for instance. <laughs> I love that you got a little bit of uh, info there uh, on the outside. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's cute. Yeah, so like this is walleyes. kind of like the context of whether or not this is for a client who specifically wanted this kind of thing or just some other style that was being explored. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know where the two styles kind of came from. And yeah, it seems like there's more of the other one than this style, but there's still several of these. Sure. Mysterious thing. I don't get it. <laughs> um, awesome. Show me another one. Yeah. How much more time do we have? We have three minutes and some. Awesome. And then we have a little wrap up sesh. Okay, great. Um, up, down? Up, yeah, what's that Adobe Live? Because that looks familiar. I mean, Either Adobe one. Live thing. Uh, what a fun composition. Looks like you can handle simplicity and complexity really well. Um, yeah, I love that. Is this presumably also hand lettered? I, it sure looks like it. Man, is that my computer dinging? Is it? It's very upset. <laughs> Yeah, but you're not disturbed, Oh, no. Here, do you want to take Throw it? Throw the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it away. I'm done. Um, yeah, I love the uh, the outlined nose. So it, it looks like you've got line work and... Um, the Cookie Monster stream. Yeah, but it looks like you've, you've got a good handle on line work and just um, <laughs> sort of shapes that... Li lineless art, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good to see. Yeah, I mean, all these textures and these kind of like bold shapes have a very folk art kind of style going for them, in which one of my painting teachers in college was very much that realm of kind of like coming from an acrylic background and how to replicate that. Uh -huh. And presuming this is all digital, they've done like a super good job on making it feel very like traditional paper and medium, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Yeah, I like the uh, sort of abstracted type in the background too. Awesome. Thanks for showing us. Um, I guess my only critique is more tiny party hats. <laughs> uh, or, you know, I'd love to see a little bit more in the About Me section because yeah. that's pretty, I mean, Earthling Who Likes to Art is, is pretty good, but um, feel free to brag a little bit about your personality and what you like to do. Yeah, like I think... Because <laughs> um, your work clearly stands, uh, speaks for itself. Yeah, a lot of the questions I think kind of come out of loving to see like when you go into one, if you can even elaborate more like how this one's elaborated. I mean, this is really nice to see mm -hmm. the reasons behind, but making sure like that consistency throughout is really nice. Hmm. Just specifically, this is a cool project. Yeah. Reimagining things. <laughs> Nice. Thank you so much for sharing, Tima. And for participating, because I think you did over the past couple of days, too. Yeah. Drew Mermaids with us. 
then get the portfolio to look at. Awesome. Hmm. <laughs> That's fun. I'd love to see these in the actual context of um, articles online and maybe in print. <laughs> It's really good. Awesome. Yeah, any last comment or? Thanks for sharing, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Awesome, thank you so much for uh, sharing all your portfolios. I wish we could look at more than just the two, but. We're gonna pass the buck on to the next guy. Because yeah. <laughs> the next stream with Daichi and Kathleen, you'll be able to A, ask them all the last questions, like you could here, but also contribute portfolio, hopefully get another chance at getting your work seen. Is there gonna group. be another pillow? There is gonna be wow. another pillow. <laughs> you will also get the chance to win this pillow. Well, not this pillow. Not this specific pillow. But the other pillow. But it's clone, manufactured clone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so we have like four minutes. Yeah, does anybody else have any questions or final thoughts on maybe animation in Photoshop or uh, different ways that you found to make GIFs? Yeah, any, anything at all. You probably have like two quick question responses capable here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just in the meantime, thank you so much for uh, joining in one or all three days. It's been super fun to uh, kind of get, get glimpses of the chat and how everybody, there's definitely more smiley faces than there are frowny faces. I've seen that much, which mm -hmm, is a great mm -hmm. sign. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, the only frowny faces just wanting to show off work and be part of the community, so. <laughs> which is a good thing. Yeah. Awesome. What uh, what kind of next steps do you have? Any cool upcoming projects you're working on? Cool upcoming projects? Places people can find you? Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, find me on Instagram. I'm tiny dot party dot hat, so tiny party hat. Um, I think, I mean, my site is katia.design, K-A-T-Y-A dot design. Makes too much sense. Um, yeah, uh, and feel free to reach out. I love finding people who are also on Adobe Live, either watching or participating in any capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're in Portland especially, I love meeting people in that art community. Um, Which I'm sure is different, but just as loving and caring as San Francisco. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've met a lot of cool people here, a lot of cool people there. Oh, wow, hi from Indonesia. All right. Wish I could get over there, but. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, and you're gonna post everything you worked on. Oh, and yeah. Have update for when all the stuff's crammed into it. Yeah, so maybe uh, we'll uh, post what we did today, and maybe a cleaned up version. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll just keep adding stuff on. It'll be my life's work. <laughs> no, realistically, it's I- It's the Mona Lisa of your career. <laughs> uh, realistically, like I like to do animations, really quick ones, just to warm up at the beginning of the day or at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so you can follow along for more of those from like three frame animations, so maybe some longer, more complex ones like we did with the video time frame, mm -hmm. timeline. Um, yeah, and thanks for all your questions, guys. It was super yeah. fun. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's been great to be here. Hope to have you back doing a different thing in the future. Yeah, when they add be in a third host anytime. timeline capacity. <laughs> <laughs> Just do a full length feature for us. Yeah, full length feature animation. I can do that in yeah, six no hours problem. across three days. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Want to skedaddle? Let's skedaddle. Awesome. Bye, guys. Thank you.